Hello everyone, it's Adrienne, the Victoria Paper Shaper, your independent Stamping Up demonstrator. This is my first instructional video, so please be gentle with me. Meet the Snow Bunny Lantern uh, tea light holder. Isn't that adorable? So that's what we're going to make today. And I'm super excited, actually, a small detail, to say that this won Queen of the Swap at the uh, recent island demonstrator meeting. So, yay! Now it features the Nature's Beauty stamp set. And this stamp set um, has an incredible special extra purpose in addition to making beautiful projects. Uh, Stamping Up is donating $4 for, from everyone sold to mental health organizations. And this inspired me to do something local. So I'm donating my full commission of $7.25 to the Island Community Mental Health Association. And in addition, when you buy this set from me, you'll get a free product-based class. And if you're not able to make it to the class or live elsewhere in Canada, I will do the class online. Um, for supplies and for the stamp set, you can visit my store at victoriapapershaper.stampingup.net. Okay, on to the other supplies. Okay, we will need your layering squares framelits. Lots of ink here. <laughs> so we're using Night of Navy and Blueberry Bushel. That's what makes this sponged on. The stays on is going to make the trees. The memento is what you're stamping the bunny in and we're using that because we'll be using um, alcohol markers to color the blends. And whenever you use the blends, you want to use a water-based ink. And we're using the smoky slate set and then the color lifter. And then the Versamark, of course, to create the magic of the sparkle up here. For cardstock, we're using Basic black, that makes the actual uh, tea light holder. Vellum for the window and whisper white for the bunny. And a few essentials here that just to add to it are the shimmery crystal effects. I used that on the bunny's tail. I don't know if you can actually tell or not, but it's like right there. And the shimmery crystal effects, this is new, this, or sorry, <laughs> the shimmery white stamping up emboss powder, this stuff is wicked. Check it out. It's, uh, so it's like white and silver mixed together and it makes these snowflakes. So I did these snowflakes in white originally and they were just kind of meh, but when you use the, the shimmery one, it adds this extra dimension of sparkle. You can't have too much sparkle. Uh, you're also gonna need linen thread to tie the little bow at the top. And I've got that there so that it can be hung on a tree. Um, optionally, I've got one here where I didn't do that. And it could be on a uh, table as a, like a place marker or decoration. And for adhesives, you wanna make sure You've got uh, tear and tape and multi-purpose liquid glue. With three-dimensional projects, I don't usually use my snail. You'll also need dimensionals to attach the bunny. And for non-stamping up stuff, just a standard hole punch and a battery-operated tea light. Emphasis on the battery-operated. A real tea light would definitely spell for disaster. So um, now would be a good place if you want, if you want to do this live with me to pause and grab all your supplies. And the rest of the video is going to be in four parts if you need to break it down because you've got other things to do. Okay, so this is the template. It is not as bad as it looks, um, or not as hard as it looks. <laughs> so the entire piece is five and a half by eight and five eighths. 
I did do it as eight and a half initially, but my tab was way too small. And rather than rejigging the entire thing because I had to make a bunch for the swap, I just went ahead with it. If you're going to rejig it, let me just grab something here tomorrow. Oh, the contrast. Okay. Don't make this these pieces smaller because they need to be wide enough to hold the tea light. So you could probably make each of these an eighth of an inch smaller and that should work. Okay. So you've got your five and a half by eight and five eighths piece of paper. Next, you're going to do a whole bunch of scoring. Now in landscape position, scoring up and down. So vertically, you're going to score at two and five eighths and then at four and three sixteenths and then at six and three sixteenths and then at eight and three eighths. So it's two and five eighths and then the next space is one and a half plus a sixteenth because the candle measures one and a half inches or the tea light. Uh, so it's one and nine sixteenths this space and then this is another two and five eighths and this is another one and nine sixteenths. So after you've embossed or sorry <laughs> scored these four places you're going to flip your paper clockwise and then you're going to score at one and one eighth and at four inches and then this is giving you one and one eighth at this side and one and a half inches on this side. So all the shaded parts are going to be cut out. So you're going to take your paper snips and you're going to cut up here and here and here and here and then here, here, here. These are just tabbed to make it easier for folding and same here. For this piece, what you want to do is mark halfway at the peak, which is one and five sixteenths. I used a little white pencil which comes off with my adhesive eraser at the very top and then I used my paper trimmer I just angled it into the slot and cut it that way so once you do all that what you get is this and this is the space where you've used your uh, I think it's your third fourth largest uh, square die and you've cut out that window. And if you don't have the die, this measures two and one eighths by two and one eighth. So that's how you get this. It is important that the window for aesthetics is on this side near the tab, because when you assemble the box, you want the seams to be at the back. So that's why it's that way. And then these guys are gonna go up and it'll be like that. Okay, now on to the fun stuff. Okay, so you've got a little piece of vellum. This is two and a half by two and a half. So we're on to part two. So, sorry, <laughs> I meant to say that before. <laughs> so if you wanna take a break, stop now. Um, so part two, we're going to make the window. Get your little embossing buddy. I go over the whole thing, even though I'm not um, stamping the whole thing just because vellum seems to have more of a static charge than regular paper. So then I'm going to take my Versamark and the cute little snowflake stamp and I'm just going to stamp it and I twice and I turn it over just so it's not the exact same pattern. Okay, after you've done that, here is a fabulous use for coffee filters. You're gonna take your shimmery stamping emboss powder and sprinkle it on. Oh, that was a little heavy, my bad. And there you go, ready to be heat embossed. Now, you do have a margin around it so you don't need to worry about it being the very very tippy top or the very edges so that's ready to be heat embossed and then you just take your coffee filter and pour your stuff back into 
your jar. So I'm not going to heat emboss in front of you because that makes a terrible noise. Um, you got to be super, super careful with vellum because it cooks quickly. So this is it after it's been heat embossed. With my embossing tool, it takes um, between 10 and 15 seconds. Each tool will be different. The second it changes, move, keep, keep moving and stop once, once it's done. You don't wanna go over it again or anything like that. Vellum can burn pretty easily. All right, Night of Navy, blueberry bushel, sponges. Okay, so I start with the Knight of Navy. Now I'm put some on the sponge. You don't need a lot and cat hair, yuck. And I always sort of just dab off a little because I, I like to sort of start lightly and just sort of, I'm sweeping it in a circular motion, keeping the center sort of void of ink for now. Sponging can be messy. Oh, it's not, not, not messy yet, but it can be. You can wind up with ink all over your fingers, but that's kind of fun too, right? So once you have it looks better down there. If I, if I lift it up, you can't see. Once you have enough, it's not, I need a little bit in this corner. Yeah, I think that's probably good. Then you take your second color, and I use the blueberry bushel. And with these sponges, just so you know, because it's a water-based ink, you just wash them off and use them again for another color. They're not like wasted. I still have a mix of inks that are old and new, so they open different ways. So sometimes I'll find myself fumbling to open one as I just did there. So this is the blueberry bushel. And I found that when these two colors mix, they just make like it's, I don't know, it's like magic, a really pretty color. So I'm just sort of going a little bit around the inside edges and you see how it's sort of like almost sort of purpley it's pretty cool. And once I get like, you know, mo I don't want to make sure I don't have a lot on there. Once the sponge is sort of almost dry, then I'm going a little tiny bit over the center just so it isn't stark. So that is the sponging. And now we're going to, whoop, trees, trees, stamp our trees on with the stays on. But I'm using an old item, so that's why I'm showing you the stays on because it's still sealed, so I'm using this up until it dries. They're uh, solvent-based mix. Okay, so you're putting the tree bottom right-hand side, but remembering that they allow about a quarter inch for the border. So about about there. Bam! shut this here you go so you've got your window ready that can go aside and then you're going to stamp your ridiculously adorable bunny in the memento ink he's so cute oh I don't know if his ears are a bit dark on that one I'm a bit of a perfectionist so yeah there yeah, I like that better Okay, then with your smoky slate blend, I'm using the fine tip because it's a pretty small area we're coloring. And uh, what I did is I just took the dark and just did some of the, the shading. It's sort of like maybe some little hairs. And then I did the same with the lighter smoky slate. I'm getting up here a little bit. He's so cute. And this just gives it sort of like a little bit more dimension. And then I'm using the uh, the lifter pin just to sort of go over it a little bit. 
and take up some of that color so it's not too dark it just gives him a little bit more then you're going to fussy cut your bunny and because I know nobody wants to sit here and watch me fussy cut I'll show you one that is wait wait for this is so cool already fussy cut that was easy so this is really funny. Did anyone ever, as a kid, try and peel a hard-boiled egg without taking off the shell? That's what this was. I never fussy cut like this. It's really quite funny. When I fussy cut, I gotta show you. It's sort of like, I do this. I cut it out, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, it's a bit smaller. And then, okay, maybe if it's a bit closer, maybe I'll get close to that piece. Okay, and then I do this, you know, Okay, maybe that piece. And I just, it goes on forever. And for whatever reason, this morning when I was making this, I just cut it out in one piece. And it like, it turned out okay. And it saved a ton of time. And I did, I'm so surprised. <laughs> anyway, okay. So that is your bunny. And that was actually part three. I forgot to mention that um, again. But yeah, you probably would have figured that out. Um, so we'll put that aside, cute little bunny. So the assembly, you've got your template or your base, and then you've got your window. And it's gonna go in like that. So I've turned it over, so this is the right way, with the tab on the right, tab on the left should be the inside. And so you're going to turn it over and put it in that way. I used Tombow, the Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue. And I just want to make sure it's not going to come out in a big squirt because that can happen. And I just made a really little line just around the edges. Whoops. Just like that. So not a lot. Less is more. And you're going to turn that over. Whoop. Wait, get it the right way. Okay, so then the embossed side will be face down and the trees will be on the left. And you're gonna adhere that. Now when I made all of these guys, I actually left them overnight. I had other projects to work on, but I would definitely give it a while to dry before assembling the whole thing but for the sake of this video because I don't want to pause it and come back or anything I'm just going to show you how I assembled the rest of it so it's going to go like this so once you've got that glued on turn it the right way up get your tear and tape and you can cut it or tear it whatever your personal preference is I actually cut all the ones for the swap, but for this one, I am tearing it. Now, see this fold right here? You want to get as close to that fold as you can rather than being in, because that's the point that people are going to see. So you don't want it coming apart there. Okay, I was a little short, but that's good thing about tearing tape. Problem solved. Okay, so I'm going to rip this off. There we go. There we go. And what I do when edges go over, I just fold them back down so it's not sticky on the inside. Now, people often try to assemble things like the doing it like this, which can be challenging. So if you make it flat, and you can make it flat, which is the best way right here, I guess, and then just fold it down, making sure to line up these two pieces. Did 
Ta -da! There you go, so you got that. Now you've got your flaps and you want to, again, this is a matter of aesthetics just because this is the front, this is the back, to make sure that this flap, the back flap goes in first and then the front flap goes over it so that there's no seam near the front. Now, because I'm putting a tea light in it and it was going to hang off a tree, I don't normally worry about gluing down tabs, but I wanted to make sure that this was um, sort of, uh, <laughs> I can't find it, held together strongly. Um, so I actually glued down my tabs with a little bit of Tombow first. Oops, here we go. Then what I did, you can see I'm holding it down. I put my glue around the outside edges just to make sure it's going to be held together. Now I go in a little bit. You don't want to go in all the way because it doesn't go all the way and then you'll have glue at the bottom okay and here you can take like a, a stamp pad or a block that's the right size and you can just sort of hold it in there and i did use blocks before but i don't have any big blocks out right now but you can just leave it for a while like that and it will hold it together now you take your adorable little bunny and you would put, I've already done it, but you would put a little bit of this fabulous shimmering crystal effects on his tail um, or her tail and you can see how it sparkles. Okay, so that's that. And then I will just get a couple little dimensionals. This is so adorable. And I sort of have him hanging off, off a little bit off the edges there. So you just decide where you want bunny and that's it. Now for hanging, you would just punch a hole near the top there and on this side too. And then you would have about a, where is it? No, that's too long. You probably only need, need about seven inches, I would say, to, to tie this through and uh, make a little, a little, uh, let's just find out, we can undo this one. Make your bow. <laughs> okay, seven and a half, so eight would have been good. It looked like, it looked like less. Anyways, there you have it. Easy peasy project, um, sort of. Any questions, message me. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, please visit my shop. Um, I'm at victoriapapershaper.stampingup.net. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And have a great day.